with class, fantastic demeanor, and a wine glass filled to the brim. What you're going to hear is the finest in urban conservative talk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the brand new Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. It's hump day, baby. Hump day. And uh, we are we are here to make sure that you understand um, what's real, what's not real, what to, what to ignore, what to pay attention to. Yes, we are here to take over the world right here on the Exceptional Conservative Network um, and powered by a- SHR Media um, and our new relationship with the great folks at High Plains Talk Radio. Thank you, High Plains Talk Radio, for... Um, <clears throat> for partnering with us and letting us spread the, the message of conservatism to the masses, the masses in the Midwest. Again, we, we, we appreciate the opportunity, and we are going to make you proud. No doubt, it's, gonna, it's the best decision you ever made, the best decision you ever made. So today, um, we, we've got some, we've got some, you know, we've got a lot of territory to cover, and we've got some tough territory to cover, because some of the things that we have to talk about are not pleasant. And I think that that's where we failed probably in the past 20 years is that we will not take on the tough stuff. We won't take on the stuff that I'm not talking about that's tough to do legislatively. I'm talking about the stuff stuff that's tough to do personally. The subjects to breach that are hard to breach personally because what we're trying to do is we're trying to live in this world and we're trying to be peaceable and we're trying to get along and what we don't want to do is create um, turbulence in our lives. We don't want to create turbulence. You know what? I've been a big um, benef- benefactor of um, not producing turbulence. I know it seems crazy, but you know what? In my personal life, you know what? And in my life at church, in my my professional life, what I don't want to do is do anything that um, breeds turbulence. I don't necessarily want to go on the path of least resistance all the time, but I do want to go the smart way that minimizes the turbulence. Because normally, when you minimize the turbulence, what you actually do is you you increase the efficiency. But sometimes you don't you don't get to the heart of the matter. And um, what we're going to talk about today is going to be a little touchy for some people, because they have these people in their lives. And they're your friends, and they're your co-workers, and they're, and they're your family. But it's time that we've had this is time that we had this discussion. And you know what? And it's great to have these discussions early in the morning because then you have all day to digest it, and by dinner time you can be over with it, and that way you can go to bed not angry. Don't let the sun um, set on 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 your anger. You have all day to get it, to, to sort of get it and then get over it. It occurred to me <clears throat> a few years ago, I was at a, um, a, a one of our favorite coffee shops, Buddy Brew, Brew Coffee, uh, hopefully soon to be a sponsor of this particular program. Um, we're hoping, we're working on it. Pray for us, we're working on it. Um, and we were having a meeting of some politicos, some local um, people involved in politics and and community affairs and and the like, um, a bunch of um, self important <laughs> people behaving self importantly, and I was in that group, no doubt. But um, I had a young man come up to me, a white liberal, probably in his early thirties, who looked me in the face, looked a fifty year old black man in the face, and said, "You know what?" You, there, you don't really think, this is what he said to me, you don't really think that black people would be as far along had it not been for Johnson's Great Society. And I was stunned. I felt like I got, you know, what that what he had done was reached over and shoved his hand down my pants and I was just stunned. I, I didn't know quite what to 
do at first or what to say at first. And then it, and then it, well, I came to my senses and I just said, are you kidding me? That you would say something to me like that. That you would see the current condition of urban America. That you would see the current condition of black people financially, educationally. That you would see the condition of black folks in America and say to me uh, that, that, that we would not be as far along if it had not been for Johnson's war on poverty or Johnson's great society. Are you serious? Are, you, you just can't be serious. If you look at the condition of, of urban America and the family situation, if you look at mass incarcerations and the and the illegitimacy rate in the black community with more than 70 percent and by some accounts, 75 percent of children in the African-American households born out of wedlock, the complete destruction of the family unit in urban America and ask me that question. How far along, and I said, well, how far along do you think we are? Do you think that we would have, have, have gone back and started eating our children? Do you think that we would have started living in, in grass huts had it not been for Johnson, by the way, the most racist president we've ever had? Oh, well, uh, up until Barack Obama. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying, you, know, you, you are, you, are you kidding me? The same man that said that if we pass the Civil Rights Act of 1974, or 64, we will have these niggers voting for us for the next 50 years. That Lyndon Johnson, that LBJ, that, again, the most racist president we've had in, the, in our history, well, until Barack Obama. Uh, and if it wasn't for, wasn't for him, black people would be as far along as they are. The same, the same group of people, the same group of Africans, the same heritage that invented mathematics, philosophy, physics, language. We needed a, a, a racist from Texas to make sure that we survived in America. Now we had gone through slavery. We had, I mean, we had, I mean, we were we were battling through Jim Crow. We had opened universities. We had produced doctors and lawyers and scientists. But it was LBJ and the Great Society that was going to save us, that I should owe some debt of gratitude to Lyndon Baines Johnson, the most racist president we've ever had, well, until Barack Obama. Are you, are, are, are you, are you, are you kidding me? You've, you, you, cannot be, you cannot be serious. You cannot be serious. And then he saw that look in my eyes, and, and you know what? Here's the deal. When you can't refute what is true, then you can do one of two things. You can decide to go with truth, which is probably the best thing to do, just to go with the truth. Or then they, what most people on the left do is then they back up and they start um, rationalizing and blaming some of the failures not on the thing that they brought up, but the failures of the right and people um, like myself that didn't go far enough. Well, we didn't have enough control. Well, you had enough control to take people who owned their own homes and put them in high-rise reservations and created some of the most dangerous places in America to live and called it urban renewal. You sent the interstates down um, through many black neighborhoods, destroying them. You managed to, to destroy the center of communities, which were which were schools in in urban America, and send their children and send those children. One of them was me, out to the suburbs to go to the school because the idea was that I was going to learn a lot better if I was sitting next to a white child. That's what you managed to do, and we found out that it's all failed. What we're doing today is asking the white liberal to stop helping us. Innovation, inspiration, and imagination. Three important characteristics that are important in any business, but especially in real estate, when you're looking for your forever home. And when that home is a new home, there are very, very many things that must go right. 
The financing must be on point. The furnishings must be on point. The location and neighborhood must be on point. And if you need someone to get that right the first time, you have to go to my friend Gary Knight at New Homes of Tampa Bay. That's New Homes of Tampa Bay. You can reach him on the web at www.newhomestpa.com. If you're looking for innovation through technology, inspiration and imagination through hard work, www.newhomestpa.com. There's no reason to wait for a special occasion to send flowers. No reason to wait until you miss a birthday or an anniversary or Valentine's Day to send flowers. All you have to do is get a hold of my friend Christine at Blooming Days Flower Shop, www.bloomingdays.com. That's www.bloomingdays.com. And tell her that you want to send the very best, that you care enough to send the very best. One of FTD's top florists in all of the United States, always in the top 100 of flower shops in the United States. That's Blooming Days Flower Shop, www.bloomingdays.com. Forget calling 1-800-something, www.bloomingdays.com. It's great to have partners, but it's even better when one of your partners is one of the finest urban conservatives in America. That's my friend Kevin Batts. Kevin Batts of Red River Chronicle TV. Red River Chronicle TV is taking the internet by storm with fabulous production, amazing commentary, and incredible insight. Red River TV is the thing that we'll all be watching in 2017. They are the people, Kevin and his wife Janelle, are the voices that are going to make the difference in urban America in 2017. So get in on the ground floor. Go to www.redriverchronicle.com and subscribe to Red River TV today. All right. Well, well. Welcome back to the Will Austin Show here on the Will on T T E C N. I have trouble saying all these words. The Social Conservative Network. Um, too many syllables, I guess. Too many syllables. Uh, but welcome back. We appreciate you joining us. You, we appreciate you being part of our success. We appreciate you um, sharing what we do, and that's really the that's really the key. Really, the, the, the key to this whole thing that we, the cuckoo thing that we do on the internet is that you share, that you like and you share. Now, now, I, I think that there's a thing about share, about, about liking something. Mm-hmm. Something has 4,000 likes. That's great. But if it has 4,000 likes, it's probably going to be able to have 40,000 likes if you share it. And, and, and for me, sharing is more important than liking. Liking is cool. But if you share it, you already have said that you liked it. So go ahead and share it with, share it with your friends. Uh, help us expand our base. Help us get this message um, of conservatism and common sense to the masses. And again, thank you for all our partners, um, SHR Media and High Plains Talk Radio. Thank you so much for your involvement in our endeavor. We appreciate you and we love you dearly. Um, we were talking about, please... White liberals, stop helping me. Stop helping me. Now, there are three, three specific areas where white liberals have been more trouble, quite frankly, than you're worth. 
you're exacerbating our condition. You're exacerbating our problem. First, is pushing what I call the helpless narrative. The helpless narrative is this. You know what? I spent 15 years working in the Hillsborough County School District, and I heard from more than one person, usually a white liberal. Well, you know those kids, you know, they come from that neighborhood. And I, I always go, what neighborhood are you talking about? The very same neighborhood that I grew up in? The very same neighborhood I grew up in? <laughs> you know, it's it, you know my my very first school. My very first school was Dowdell Junior High School, and they pulled from an area around around here called Progress Village. Progress Village, again, um, of course we call it the Ville. Um, so I'll refer to Progress Village um, going on as the Ville. Uh, that's where I, that's where I grew up. And the, the idea is that when I was now teaching at um, Dowdell Junior High School that we get some kids from the Ville and the teachers young white liberals would always say well you know they, they have trouble with stuff because you know, you know it, it's where they grow up and I would always say stop up that's exactly where I grew up do I have the same kind of troubles do I have behavior troubles do I have focus problems can I not do math at the time I was working in the math department. Can I not put a sentence together? Is sentence structure a problem for me? I grew up there. Went to an all-black elementary school. Are you serious? It's because they, they grew up there that they can't. They can't achieve. It's what George Bush called the, um, the bigotry of, of low expectations. Oh, by the way, um, Bush 41 uh, went to the hospital. Our prayers go out to Bush 41 and the Bush family uh, for his quick recovery. He was feeling a little bit dizzy, and they took him in, and, and, I, and we're praying that he is, he is fine. That he, he's, I know he's 92, um, but then he will, that he, will have long, he will continue to have long life, and he would live in health. He would live in health for the rest of his days. Okay, now, you know, it's just, sorry, that came to me and I, and I had to say it. Here's, but here's the deal, though. That because somebody grew up in an area, somebody was born into an area, that they are somehow helpless. And that if we don't do our best, if we don't throw ourselves, and this is white liberals, if we don't throw ourselves down on every mud puddle, if we don't try to bridge every difficulty, They'll never succeed. What? What's going to happen to them? Are their friends going to, going to beat them up and eat them? Well, of course not. It's ridiculous. The fact of the matter is that, yes, growing up in certain areas are, is tougher than growing up in others. But, the ben- but there's a benefit. The benefit is that you become tougher. You become stronger. You become more resilient, you become more resourceful. Which is how, how, and I've said this before on the show, is that when racism and bigotry was codified in law through things like Jim Crow, we had more success in the urban corridor in America than we have now. We had more doctors, we had more lawyers, we had more more people attending college, especially men attending college, than we do now. Families were stronger. Per capita, um, f- familial wealth was higher. Things were better. Now, when I say things were better, I, I, I don't for a second mean, and, and I know some of you people are idiots, uh, I'm going to say that we should go back to the 50s, that we should go back to Jim Crow. I didn't say that. You said that. What I said is that that when things were tougher, we were better. So we have what it takes in us. So we have what it takes in us already to be successful. We don't need white liberals tossing themselves down over every mud puddle because I'm helpless. I tell people in a heartbeat, I don't need your damn help. What I need you to do is get out my way. And what you need to do is get up out my face. That's what I need you to do. And that's all I need you to do. I don't need you to help me. I don't need you to run interference for me. I don't need you to do that. 
because it just makes it tougher for me. Affirmative action is one of those things. Let's talk about that for a second because that always comes up. Now, some, some will say, and correctly, that affirmative action gave people an opportunity that they may, might not have gotten otherwise. The only problem is the second person, again, it's always the unintended consequence, the second person that shows up to interview for that position or a position like that is always going to catch hell. And you're going to catch hell because they, the first person already knows that they were hired because they were a certain skin tone. They had an overabundance of melanin in their, in their skin. And, we, and, and the company was under pressure to hire them because the white liberal do-gooders could then beat their chest and say, look, look what a good job I've done. I have put a person who, who, is, who is struggling, who is being looked at with an ensconced eye, who now doesn't have the skills or the resiliency to overcome what that person has to overcome because he's because more more than likely they're in a they're in a position that they're not qualified for and unfortunately that happened a lot which made it diff, more difficult for the second person so you had these companies you had these organizations that had these uh, what we call what we call them when I went to high school we have um, the sea of salt and you had these speckles of pepper and these seas of salt because it didn't matter the qualifications it only mattered the excess of melanin and that in itself is racist and that in itself promotes that helpless narrative that we're helpless that I'm somehow helpless because I have an overabundance of melanin in my and you know what in my body. But what I am not, white liberal, is helpless. I can learn. My children can learn. I can be successful. My children can be successful. And we can be successful without your help. We don't need you throwing yourself on every supposed grenade. Because if you don't do it, I won't see it. And the fact of the matter is that most white liberals, again, young white liberals especially, only do it to make themselves feel better about their already empty lives. They're not doing it for some altruistic reason. They're doing it simply to make themselves feel better about their already empty and uh, empty life that's bereft of any meaning. Because their parents threw themselves on every grenade. So every bit of accomplishment that they have, they know is false. So they're trying their best to make up for that. Do me a favor, deal with your own personal struggles and leave me out of it. The second thing. White liberals, especially young white liberals, stop enabling and encouraging destructive behavior in my community. Stop it. I need you to stop it. I need you to stop appropriating culture that is dangerous and destructive to my community. I mentioned this yesterday. I started talking about, you know, sagging pants. Now, I'm not worried about sagging pants as a fashion statement. White liberals have taken on the sagging pants as a fashion statement. When it's a lot more destructive in my community because it pushes a prison narrative. The thug mentality is not something that is fun and cultural and a phase like it is in liberal white America. It is a dangerous, destructive reality where I live. So if you could stop appropriating that bit of dangerous and destructive part of our culture and behavior and, and, and in that encouraging that behavior more of it I would appreciate it and you know what and that's really the deal and and and, and when when white liberals say don't say you know what I don't think I'm gonna let my kids do that I don't think I'll let my kids listen to some of that gangster rap I'm, I'm you know what I don't think that that's appropriate 
and simply blow it off as to, well, you know what, you know, that's just how they are. That's just how they are. It's part of their culture. It's cool. It's cool. You know how you guys do that rap thing? Can you all do that rap thing? <laughs> I'm telling you, white conservatives don't talk that way. Only white liberals talk that way. You can all do that rap thing. Can, 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 can you do the rap for us? So if I give <laughs> You know, you're working with a group of people, and again, I worked in school. I worked in the Hillsborough County School District for 15 years. Um, so when you're working with with teachers, you're working with a pretty liberal bunch to start with, and when you're working with white teachers, you're look, you're working with a really liberal bunch. Um, and any project that you're doing that involves the kids and involves teachers invariably, especially in the 90s, invariably someone would go, oh, I know, we could do a rap. <laughs> go, what? We could do a rap. Why, why, and I, I would ask the question, why would we do a rap? Well, you know, because the kids like it. I make it a lot from it. I said, hey, so when's the last rap that you, I mean, that what's the last, I would ask, what's the last rap you listened to? So who's your favorite rap artist? Invariably, it'd be Will Smith, right? And it wasn't NWA. I said, so you listen to a lot of NWA? Huh? You mean the National Wrestling Association? Jesus. <laughs> no. You know? You know, NWA, niggas with attitude. You know? F the police. F the police. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not that. Oh, some other... Disneyized version of our our, our culture to in, to keep enabling and encouraging behavior that is detrimental to where these kids live. So have I said that 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 gangster rap is dangerous and detrimental to the ur- to urban America? Have I said that? Well, yeah, I just did. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I just said? Yes, yes. I'm sorry, when you're calling women bitches and hoes and talk about making money and killing people and selling drugs, yeah, that is just, that is dangerous and destructive. When people take that on as a lifestyle and not a music choice, not an art choice, yes, that is dangerous and destructive. Thank you, white liberals, if you stop encouraging and enabling that sort of behavior and that mentality and that narrative in my neighborhood. Thank you very much. And when you enable and encourage it because of political correctness, shame on you. Yes. I said it. A lot of that so-called music is dangerous and destructive. It, it, it goes outside and beyond the bounds of just entertainment to culture to behavior. And white liberals who don't have the backbone to stand up and go, you know what? I don't know if that's appropriate. I don't think I'll let my kids buy that next album. I think I'll listen to what they're listening to on YouTube and on iTunes. Are you afraid to because you don't want to be, you don't want your kids to think you're racist and bigots. You want your friends to think that you're cool, that your kids think that you're cool. Yeah, my dad's cool. Yeah, he listened to Lil John. Your <laughs> dad don't know about Lil John. Don't know about bitches and hoes and drugs and 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 and, and, and sex. You know, it's it's absolutely amazing that I could be driving down the street in my neighborhood pull up to a stop sign or, or, or traffic light and someone's playing some of their music and hear the profanity and the vulgarity L- vulgarity stuff that you couldn't get away say being that you just couldn't walk into uh, the piggly wiggly and start saying being blasted at three thousand decibels throughout the neighborhood I am a believer that whatever you let get in you stays in you and manifests 
whatever you get into you through your ear gates or your eye gates, whatever you repeat becomes part of you. So when they, so when you tell me it's just music and it doesn't mean anything, I, I don't know the word, I just listen to the beat, I was going, no, that's nonsense. I'd appreciate the white liberals for not encouraging and enabling dangerous and destructive behavior. The white liberals that show up from the, um, the lily white colleges raising their fists in anger of what was going on in urban America. And as soon as all hell breaks loose, and as soon as the police start shooting and, and the buildings start burning, you run for cover, get on the bus, and head back to the suburbs and go back to your mom's house before you head back to your Ivy League schools to leave my communities burned and destroyed. Till you leave, you go into places like Ferguson, Missouri, and help cause death, destruction, and mayhem. And then you head back. Then you head back to school, to your safe space, full of yourself, like you've called, like you've done some great good. Yeah, I would really appreciate if you stopped doing that. White liberals, I'd really appreciate if you stop helping me. You know what else, white liberals? You know what I'd like you to do? I'd like you to stop trying to define what I'm supposed to think as a black person in America and how I'm supposed to feel. Hell, it's bad enough that other black people want to yank my black card because I've said what I've said this morning already. It's that's bad enough. That's frustrating enough. But when white liberals look at me and go, "Well, you know what? You you're not the regular black person." And I go, "Excuse me, what is the regular black person? The person that can't finish a sentence, per- person that can't do math, the person that is uh, is unreasonable and emotional and agrees with everything you say that is looking for like I mentioned yesterday, the Tostitos truck in, in the MLK parade to pass out free Doritos? What's a typical black person? So whenever, I'm telling you, whenever white, whenever white liberals tell me that I'm not black enough, or they, or they tell me that I'm trying to be white, I'll tell you what, I want to throat punch him. I'll just be honest with you, I just want to throat punch him. I don't do it. But I'll be honest with you, I do, I, I do want to. I want to just throat punch them. I'd appreciate if you stop doing that, if you try, trying to define what I'm supposed to be so it fits into your narrative that you're trying to, you're trying to help me because I'm helpless and your children are helpless. You know what that, that that black people steal that black children steal because they're poor. They do these things because they're poor. They don't excel in school because they're poor, and they have an excessive melanin in their skin. White liberals, stop helping me. You have become the champions of my trap. You have set us aside, put us in high-rise reservations that, again, are the most dangerous places to live in the country, all in the name of helping me. I had a home. I had a house. I had a property. I had a business. I had a neighborhood. I had a school. I had all that. And then you helped me through 1960s, through urban renewal, you helped me right out of it. Through Johnson's war on the poor and his not so great society, you helped me out of my prosperity into my depend into my dependency. You know what? Stop helping me. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the Willie Lawson Show here on um, the Exceptional Conservative Network. We appreciate you being being with us. 
We'll be back right after these messages. This is your business diva, Melanie Collette, inviting you to join me for my new show, Money Talk with Melanie, on January 16th at 10 a.m. on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Joining me will be Dr. Brooks Robinson of BlackEconomics.org. We will discuss President-elect Donald Trump's New Deal for Black America. I hope you'll join us. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital. Men of Faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. The best late-night conservative talk show in America, Black Kids Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clan. Uh, and uh, we're working on immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best and late-night conservative talk, Sackhead's Radio. Hark, 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 dude. Hark, 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 dude. Radio. Hark, 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 dude. Hark, 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 dude. Radio. And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. Good morning. I'm Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Okay, folks, that's not how it goes. I think I'm <laughs> Shannon and I you're so. Michael. Yeah. Okay. We are The Right Way with Shannon and Mike. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Live on SHR Media. And on TECN. Where we'll be talking about all kinds of things. From sports and politics. To food and entertainment. To money. Family. And anything else in between. Community, holidays, all kinds of things. It'll be great. Join us from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So you're ready to stop the talk? And get with the walk? Go to www.fightbackmedia.com. That's www.fightbackmedia.com and get involved today. Go ahead, scroll down and give us your contact information. Uh, we want to spread the message of conservatism in every single urban area in America. We want to sit down at the rib shack, at the chicken joints. We want to make sure that, that, that people know that there is an alternative to the way they live. People want to, we want to let people know that it is time to make their elected and unelected leaders responsible and accountable. www.fightbackmedia.com. That's www.fightbackmedia.com. You're tired of the cold? You're tired of the taxes? It's time to move to Florida. And our friend... Gary Knight at New Homes of Tampa Bay is the perfect person to help you. You can just give Gary a call at 813-770-9452 or you can go to the website to look for your brand new home at www.newhomestpa.com. Move to Florida. It's about time. All 
All right, welcome back to the William Watson Show here on the Exceptional Conservatives Network. We appreciate you being with us this morning. We hope that um, we are pushing things in a way that you can get along with, that you can get behind, and that you can help us push. Again, likes are fine, shares are better. Share us with your friends. If you like it, your friends will like it. That's why they're your friends. I've always said that, and I've always said it because it's always made sense to me. Um, So that's how we grow. We grow because we not only use our own network of friends, we use your network of friends too. Yes, indeed, a symbiotic relationship. You see, a black man can, can use more than single syllable words. The word is symbiotic, and I get what it means. So, <sighs> pushing off the dangerous and destructive narrative of the left, pushing the, the, the health and the medicine of urban conservatism right here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Listen, I was re- reading an article on, the, I think it's na- in National Review yesterday, and it struck me, and I wanted to bring this to you today. It's not normally the stuff that I talk about, but I find it extremely important. Um, top divinity schools, in, and for those of you who went to public school, divinity schools are supposedly where um, preachers go and get trained. Divinity schools. The top, uh, Supposedly the top schools, one at Duke and one at Vanderbilt. Um, are now the, the the are now being pressured by the administration to refer to God, the Christian God, in more gender neutral terms. That's right. You heard me right. In more gender neutral terms. Now, this is not a and, and what's crazy is it's not a class for. For freshmen, this is not some intro to religion. This is divinity school. This is a school that's set up, a programs that are set up for people who are already working in ministry, already working in the Christian ministry. Now, by the Christian teachings, by the Christian history, by the Christian documents, Christians have already decided, already decided, that the God they serve is male. They refer we refer to 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 God Jehovah as he his and father. Already. That's how it is. So if you're teaching about think about this, this is the greatest part. If you're teaching about Christianity, you can't just change that. You can't just start referring to to the God of the Bible as something other than he or his or father because that's how they teach it it'd be like me saying that you know what buddha's not fat buddha's buff we're going to we're going to do we're going to redo buddha we're going to look make buddha look like arnold schwarzenegger why because the fat buddha promotes childhood obesity is that some liberal, not white, young liberal nonsense? Right? Because Buddha promotes childhood obesity. So we're not going to have Buddha out there anymore. We're going to ban Buddha. Um, at least the fat Buddha. We're going to change Buddha. We're going to send Buddha to Fifth Avenue for a makeover. We're going to, you know, Michelle Obama is going to get with Buddha and get with the, um, the Movement 60 plan. You're going to slim down, Buddha. You're going to back off those french fries. Doesn't that sound like madness? Doesn't that sound incredibly stupid? Well, this is the same sort of stupidity at the same level when in a divinity class designed to teach people who are already in the Christian ministry to refer to God, Jehovah, the the God of the Bible in some gender neutral terms. Who are they trying to protect? Who, who safe space are they trying, are they trying to protect? We are in deep trouble. If this sort of madness persists 
in our nation. We are in deep trouble. If simple, if simple, easy truths, I mean, easy, set them up on a T, knock them out of the park kind of truths are being changed in some of our major colleges and universities. Now, I'm, now I'm thinking that Duke and, and Vandy are two really good schools. Vandy is the only place in the SEC where football players actually go there to go to school and not play football. Now, basketball players go to Duke not to go to school, but uh, we know that. If they want to go to school, we have to go down the street to the public school at, at North Carolina. We know that, too. But the, but it, it it doesn't make a lot of sense that the, that either of these divinity schools, and I keep saying divinity schools because I don't want you to think about I'm talking about the university at large. I'm not, th- I'm not talking about some, some Captain Cupcake and the Snowflake Warriors in a humanities class designed for freshmen. I'm talking about the church part of these institutions that's set up to train people to go out and work in ministry are being pressured and are caving to referring to God of the Bible, Jehovah, in gender neutral terms. You have got to be kidding me, right? You 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 can't be serious. You can't be serious. But it's happening. It's happening. You know, I and 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 again, I'm I'm all I'm all about what can we do about it? Well, I don't know if there's anything that we can do about it except making sure that if you're involved in ministry and you're involved in a church that that sends people off for more training to avoid, you know, to ask these questions beforehand and to avoid these places. Ask the question. And I know it's uncomfortable. I said this at the beginning of this program. Sometimes these discussions are uncomfortable, but sometimes we have to have them. We have to breach the uncomfortableness to get to the truth. You got to break that hard shell to get to the to, to the lovely flavor of the snow crab, don't don't you? So my so so we have to ask these questions. If you're if you're about to go off to divinity school, if you are um, thinking about going into the ministry and going to seminary somewhere, have to ask these questions. How does your university refer to God of the Bible? Do you refer to do you refer to God as he, his, father, or some ridiculous, nonsensical, gender-neutral terms. It'd be like teaching Romeo and Juliet, it says so in the article, but like teaching Romeo and Juliet, reteaching it as that, that, that they were some sort of asexual couple, that they were both some sort of transgendered couple. When we know that that's not, when we know that that's not how Shakespeare wrote it, when we know that that's not how Shakespeare wrote it at all, it was a, it was a, it was a story about a man and a woman, actually a little boy and a little girl, really. We know that the, the, that it wasn't some story about some transgendered or or two asexual people, because we don't want to refer to them as him or her. Because if we do, it promotes the patriarchy. White liberals, if you could stop helping us, that would be good. That would be great. If you could stop helping me, that would be fine. All right, listen, um, I want to make sure that I get this in every time I get an opportunity, and I have an opportunity today. This is my friend Sunny Johnson, and she's going to be on the show uh, next month. Um, so you, so you will want to tune in. Um, this is 19, excuse me, 2015 at right online in Washington, DC. Show you how I would deliver this conservative message to the black community. Can I do that? I hear you. I feel you. I get it. Life in your America Your parents didn't care or weren't there. The schools pushed you out without making sure you can read. Politicians tell you that a brighter tomorrow so you smoke as much as you can to get through today. You are tired of seeing your brain.
brothers, sons, daughters, cousins, your friends killed, imprisoned, or lost to drugs. You want to do the right thing, but all it takes is one time, one mistake for everything to go wrong. And picking yourself up seems impossible because you can't get a job when you have a record. You're sleeping on your mama's couch because you can't afford your own space. You feel unfit to parent your children because your life is so screwed up. What in the hell are you going to teach them? I get it. I know. But you are being surrounded by the people that championed your track. They developed your public housing. They took control of your education. They sent your fathers to, uh, to jail for nonviolent offenses. Made single motherhood cool by calling it feminism. Built the police force through unionization. You claim harass you. And now when you're fed up, they give agitators reign to burn down your city. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. If your friends are yelling for death and destruction, do they actually want change? And is that what you live in now? Democrats want to be the party of the poor. In order for that to happen, they have to keep you poor. And the next dinner is on you. It's about you. And this is and this is what we do in this show all the time. It is, this is not about this is not about Donald Trump. This is not about um, any of those clowns. This is not about any of those people. It's not about Barack Obama. It's not about about you know what Nancy Pelosi or Maxine Waters or or Chuck Schumer or Barney Frank or any of those idiots. It's really about you. It's about what you are going to do. You know we can sit at home and complain all we want. We can sit at home and watch the news and complain and whine and and stomp our feet and hold our breath and say we're not going to go to you know we're not going to watch any NFL we're not going to do any of that stuff but you know what none of that stuff really matters a tinker's dam all that really matters is what you do what are you doing to improve the conditions of where you live what are you doing to improve the conditions of your country what are you doing that's what matters and if for some reason you don't have something to tell me that what you're doing, then I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If you're not helping people get out of generation dependency into generational wealth, then I don't want to hear how you're whining about welfare. I don't want to hear it. How are you making people's lives better? How are you making people who live in your community's lives better? And if you're not doing that, then you're making it worse. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the Willie Lawson Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you.